Science of Energy, Critical Concepts Video Series. Video 6, Monopolar Electrosurgery. Best Practices and Techniques to Avoid Mistakes. This video will cover pad site injury, direct coupling, capacitive coupling, insulation failures, and surgical fires. With the techniques reviewed here, surgeons can reduce risks of unintended damage when using monopolar electrosurgical devices. Please first watch video 5, Monopolar Electrosurgery, Technology and Principles of Electricity, as its content is foundational to the concepts in this video. Pad Site Injury and Current Concentration as alternating current enters and exits the patient, the return electrode size is key to preventing unintended tissue damage to the skin in contact with it. Return electrodes can be a single-use sticky pad or a large reusable pad. The large surface area dissipates electrical current to reduce energy density and avoid tissue damage. When a single-use sticky pad is incorrectly applied, it can cause a pad site burn. The degree of tissue damage, or severity of the pad site burn, is determined by two factors, unadhered surface area and activation time. Most modern electrosurgery systems monitor resistance at the return electrode to detect adequate patient contact. These generators will stop the flow of the electricity as a safety measure to prevent injury from concentrated current flow at the single-use sticky pad. This video demonstrates the effects of current concentration. Though the energy is being applied to the top sausage, current passes through all the sausages to the return electrode on the bench top. As current passes between the links, the narrow cross section concentrates the current, causing unintended damage. In a practical example of taking down an adhesion between the gallbladder and duodenum, applying energy can cause unintended damage on the other end of the adhesion. Direct coupling. Direct coupling is the passage of energy through a metallic instrument. Surgeons can be burned when buzzing a hemostat, called intended direct coupling. The injury is often incorrectly attributed to a hole in the surgeon's glove. The actual cause of the hole is from the electrical burn. The burn injury to the surgeon can occur under any one of the following circumstances. The surgeon activates the monopolar instrument in the air prior to contacting the hemostat. The result is an open circuit with peak voltages as high as 10,000 volts. The surgeon uses a coagulation waveform with high voltages. The surgeon applies energy near the fingers grasping the hemostat. To avoid getting burned, never activate the monopolar device in the air. Always touch the monopolar device to the hemostat before activating energy. Activating prior to contacting the hemostat may cause arcing, resulting in a burn. Always use cut mode rather than coagulation. If necessary, increase the power to be effective. Do not touch the monopolar device to a location near the fingers holding the instrument. When buzzing a hemostat, use all your fingers to hold the instrument. Doing so provides the most surface area for contact, minimizing current concentration. Unintended direct coupling can also occur in surgery. This video shows the dangers of applying electricity near or to a staple line and the negative impact on the adjacent tissue. Not only can staples melt, but they will conduct current, producing a wide area of unintended tissue damage. When operating through a single incision, instruments in proximity can transfer energy. Unintended coupling usually happens outside the field of vision, a common issue of laparoscopy. Capacitive coupling. When an insulator separates two conductors, the insulator serves as a capacitor and creates an electrostatic field. Thus, a current in one conductor can induce a current in the other. Capacitive coupling with a monopolar device can occur under any one of the following circumstances. An active electrosurgical cable wrapped around a towel clamp, using a metal trocar with an active electrosurgical instrument in it, operating around a metal total hip prosthesis. Sweating skin inside an intact surgical glove. A metal cannula around an active electrosurgical instrument. The smaller the cannula, the greater the risk for capacitance. The risk increases when a metal cannula has a plastic grip around it. Insulation failures. 
Insulation failures occur when an active electrode's protective coating is compromised. These occurrences can create an alternate route for electricity to flow. If the current is concentrated, it can cause significant injury. As noted earlier in this video, smaller areas of contact have a greater likelihood of injury due to the current concentration. Due to the worry of small holes going unnoticed, insulation failure on reusable instruments is a concern. Compromised insulation can occur from any one of the following circumstances. Repeat sterilization of reusable instruments. Mechanical trauma to the instrument. Repeat electrical activation. Manufacturer defects. Before performing monopolar electrosurgery, always check reusable instruments for integrity. Surgical fires. Surgical fires are one of the most serious risks in surgery. 550 to 600 surgical fires per year happen in the U.S. Surgical fires require a fuel source, oxidizer, and an ignition source. In monopolar electrosurgery, a spark from an active electrode can ignite a fire in the presence of fuel and an oxidizer. Examples of common fuel, oxidizer, and ignition sources in the OR are shown here. One situation where a surgical fire can occur is during a facial or tracheal procedure where the oxygen delivered to the patient accumulates under the surgical drapes, forming a tent filled with oxygen. In this scenario, a spark from an electrosurgery device can ignite the oxygen and set fire to the drapes and the patient. In this event, immediately turn off the gases to eliminate the oxidizer so that the fire can be extinguished. In the case of an endotracheal tube fire, it's critical to immediately remove the tube. Key takeaways and tips. In review, specific measures to reduce risk during electrosurgery include ensure sticky pad return electrodes are securely affixed to the patient's skin, use patient contact quality monitoring systems to prevent pad site injuries, be aware of surrounding anatomy to avoid unintended injury to a nearby structure, Avoid open circuits by not activating the monopolar device in the air. Avoid touching metal to prevent unintended direct coupling. Check the insulation on all instruments before use. This is the last video in this critical concept video series. If you haven't done so already, be sure to watch the other videos to learn about the science and tissue effects of ultrasonic and bipolar technologies. Continue your learning journey at the Johnson & Johnson Institute website located at jnjinstitute.com. Lastly, you can learn about the ultrasonic, bipolar, and monopolar surgical devices offered by Ethicon on the web address shown here.